Good day to you, this is Graham Paddock with another Paddock's Club video tutorial. Today in the sectional title context we'll look at notifications, consents and certificates that you're likely to come across in the course of managing a sectional title scheme. Let's start off with those generated at the time a scheme is developed. If the scheme was, uh, was, was developed before 1997, the local municipality will have approved it. Look for conditions imposed by the local municipality. Um, they, they would be in the certificate issued and in the deeds registry file for the scheme. The, those conditions should in fact be brought forward also into a conveyances certificate which details the title deed conditions and developers conditions um, applicable to the scheme. That's vitally important um, and it's an, the, one of the most important written documents. Uh, the scheme establishment um, form W issued by the Registrar of Deeds give you the, gives you the date upon which the body corporate came into existence. Again, very important. Then let's look at those developed, or should I say produced, by the body corporate. Firstly, under the Act, well, whenever a special or unanimous resolution is taken by way of written resolution by owners, then there will be a copy and that should be kept. In terms of Section 1-2, um, an owner can give notification of a special address for meeting notices and, and, and obviously the, the, uh, the body corporate must keep a copy of that. In terms of Section 35-5, when rules change, the trustees must give a Form V notification to the Registrar of Deeds. Again, copies must be kept. Section 37.1 caters for notice um, to the Registrar of change of the body corporate service address. Um, it doesn't give a prescribed form, um, but, uh, but that is, is something where the copy should be kept. Under Section 37.3, the body corporate can be required to give a certificate as to how much what uh, the levy is for a particular unit, how it's payable, the extent to which it's been paid, and the amount of any rates or taxes which it has paid but not recovered from owners. Copies of those should also be kept. Section 44.1, authority to uh, inspect sections. The body corporate may authorize people who then knock on your door and say, I'd like to come in and inspect on behalf of the body corporate. Those sorts of authorities are important and should be kept. Section 44.1F caters for notice by an owner of any change of ownership, any bonding or any dealing with a unit. It's not often in fact adhered to, but an owner is under a, a statutory obligation to tell the body corporate whenever those things happen. And obviously the copies of those should be kept. In terms of Section 48.1B, um, if the building is ever deemed to be destroyed, not only owners but all other stakeholders have to agree in writing and obviously that's a vital and important piece of paper. Uh, the prescribed management rules cater for a lot of certificates, consents and other written documents um, in terms of PMR 2D, a notice uh, by the owner of the change of ownership, bonding or dealing, that's the corresponding provision to Section 44.1F of the Act. PMR 3 deals with owner and, uh, and body corporate domicilium, their service address and then notices that they have to give, those obviously have to be kept. PMR 10.2 um, it caters for the possibility uh, that a trustee may, by written notice to the body corporate, instruct it to pay its, uh, the remuneration it would pay to that trustee ordinarily to an alternate that's been appointed for that trustee. When in terms of PMR 13A, a trustee resigns, that has to be in writing, and obviously that's an important document. PMR 15.3, the bondholder requirement for notice of trustee meetings, that has to be kept on record. Um, if there are round-robin resolutions, in fact, whether they're taken by trustees or owners, copies of those should be kept in the body corporate records. In terms of PMR 31.3, notice by trustees after the AGM and after they've taken the resolution, telling those owners what their levies are, when they're payable, that sort of thing. Um, those, those are important. PMR 33.3, the requirement by the majority of owners for separate meters for electricity, water or gas. Important perhaps until those infrastructural changes have been made, not, not thereafter. PMR 39.2, notice by an owner of a fax or email address for the delivery of AGM documents, which otherwise is very expensive. Um, PMR 71.2, a notice of a dispute or complaint uh, for the purposes of arbitration and PMR 71.4 notice by uh, the chief registrar of these nowadays for the appointment of an arbitrator where the owners are disputing or the people disputing can't agree. And then notice of general meetings obviously are important documents that must be kept. Under the prescribed conduct rules, the first one caters for trustee consent for an animal, reptile or bird. I suggest that a register of these consents is vitally important because there's, there are very often questions thereafter. Um, PMR 2, when the trustees designate a part of the common property for refuse bins, um, which owners are then obliged to, uh, uh, to use for that purpose. PMR 3, the trustee consent to an owner 
uh, to park on a, on a specific area of the common property, PMR, yeah, PCR, uh, for the trustee approval of a safety or inspect ex insecting exclusion device, um, and P uh, PCR 8, a trustee consent to erect washing lines on the common property. Very unusual, but there is a provision for that document. Owners generate uh, documents also. The most common is the appointment of a proxy for general meetings. Um, in terms of Section uh, 13C of the Act, an owner can consent um, to a unanimous resolution that adversely affects his or her rights or powers. Clearly, the copy of that must be kept. In terms of PMR 7, um, owners can nominate persons to serve as trustees. And in terms of PMR 53, um, owners um, 25, holding 25% of the quotas or bondholders holding 25% in number of all the sections can requisition a general meeting. Again, doc important documents. Finally, I'm going to suggest that there are some additional notifications that would make sense. A notice of complaint, if there is an internal dispute resolution process, a notice of the body corporate decision in regard to the complaint in similar circumstances, and a set notice for Section 35.6 applications for copies of the rules. I hope that this has been uh, of, of, of value to you. If you have any questions, please ask them in the discussion forum.